Hello, it's Marco here, and today we're gonna to be doing a quick overview of the basic packing options available in UV Packmaster 3. Now, by the basic packing options, we're going to be focusing on the packing options and the pixel margin panels. Now, just having the knowledge of these two panels is all you need to perform efficient packing in using a standard workflow. Now there are panels which give you more advanced packing functionalities, but that's for the next video. Now we're gonna be focusing specifically on the most basic single tile packaging mode throughout this entire tutorial. Now this mode simply packs all the selected islands to a configuration box in the UV space. Now the main mode of single tile is the default settings for UV Packmaster 3. This is the UV map we will be working with in this tutorial. And I'm gonna show you how super easy it is to pack a UV map with UV Packmaster 3 in the most basic scenario. All you have to do is select all the islands you wanna pack, you can just press A, and then uh, just, just press the pack button, and that's it. As you can see, the UV map was packed in a matter of milliseconds. Cool, so that's the end of the video. No, <laughs> let's go through some more. Let's go about talking about the particular packing options. Now, one of the most important packaging options is precision, and that's why it's located at the very top of the UI. So this value will define how exact the packer will be when it's looking for an island location during the packing process. Now, the larger the value, the more exact the packing. Now, keep in mind that if you increase the value of this parameter, it'll also result in longer packing time, so do it with care. Now, the default value is 500, so it should be suffice in most scenarios, so change the value of this parameter only if you really need to. Now the next parameter is the margin. Now this parameter defines the distance between islands the packer will be using during the packing process. Now the lower the value, the more tightly the islands will be packed. And as you can see, we've packed the islands with a margin of 0 0.003, which is yeah, it's a pretty low value. Hence, the islands are packed quite tightly. Now, let me increase the margin value to let's say 0 0.0015 and press enter and then we'll click pack. And as you can see that the spacing between the islands is much wider. Now there's an important fact regarding the margin parameter, okay? Packing a UV map using this parameter is very fast, but a downside, it doesn't give you very exact control over the spacing between the islands. Setting the value of a margin parameter gives you some clue regarding the distance between islands in the resulting packing, but you cannot correlate that distance with the exact distance in the UV space. Like for example, a number of texture pixels. So you should use the margin parameter only if such an exact distance definition is not required in a given scenario. Now, of course, UV Packmaster provides a mean for exact definition of spacing between islands, and it's called the pixel margin, but we'll talk about that later in the tutorial. Now, the next option in the packing options subpanel is rotation enabled. Now, this option is pretty straightforward. It determines whether the packer is allowed to rotate the island during the packing process. Now, you want to keep this option enabled in most of the cases, as the ability to rotate islands significantly improves packing results. The next two options allow you to determine how the packer will rotate islands during packing. Now, the first one is pre-rotation disabled, and as you can see, the option is off by default, which in fact means that the so-called pre-rotation is enabled. Now, the reason why it is enabled is because it is a very useful feature. Now, let me show you what it does with these three islands. Oops, let's just, that one, that one, and that one. Now, I'm just gonna move them over here for a sec, and then let's just kind of like rotate by 45 degrees. Now, packing islands orientated in such a way would not be efficient in a general case. That's why pre-rotation does it automatically. It orientates all the islands before packing in the optimal way. Now, take a look when I select all the islands and then click pack. As you can see, despite having the large islands rotated by 45 degrees before packing, they were automatically pre-rotated by the packer so that they align now with both the UV axes. And this is the optimal orientation to pack them. That's what the pre-rotation operation does for every island where it is enabled. It finds the optimal rotation for every island so you don't have to care about it, simple. But uh, let's do the same thing, and I'm going to enable pre-rotation disabled. So I'm just gonna undo that. 
we're back to this view here and uh, let's go pack. So with the pre-rotation disabled, the islands were not orientated in the optimal way. Now generally, pre-rotation is a very useful thing. Thanks to it, you don't have to bother orientating the islands in a specific way before packing. The packer will do this for you. That's why you should disable it only if there is a very specific orientation that you would like the islands to be packed with and you don't want the packer to change it. Let's, uh, let's, let's turn that back off, on, off, on. Now the second option determines how the packer rotates islands during packing in the rotation step. The parameter determines the number of orientations being considered for every island during the packing. Now the value of this parameter is in angles, so in degrees. It works in the following way. When the packer determines the orientations for an island to be used during the packing, it consistently adds the rotational step angle until it reaches a full 360 degrees. Now it's gonna be easier to explain on a specific island, so let's just go ahead and select this one. So I'm just gonna use this island for the following part. Now the default value for the rotation step is 90 degrees. Now with this value, the packer's gonna rotate this island 90 degrees, a number of four times, till it works out what is the best rotation for this island to fit onto the UV map. So with a 90 degree step rotation, it's gonna be four orientations. However, if we kind of like bump this up to 45 or lower it down to 45, now it's gonna rotate this island eight times to find the best orientation when it's packing the UV. Now, if I really wanted to, I could use the auxiliary menu here and I could set kind of like 10 degrees, for instance. Now doing some quick maths in my head, it's gonna do about 36 rotations to find the best orientation for this island. So for instance, now if I select everything and let's go pack and with this rotation set to 10 you can see the results that some of the islands were rotated much more gradually in order to get a better matching the more orientations being used during packing the better coverage the packer can achieve but more orientations also mean more time needed to process the entire operation also Sometimes you won't want to allow any other orientations other than four most standard orientations so that the islands follow the texture direction in a specific way. Now, generally a vast majority of packing scenarios, the default value is 90 degrees for step rotation and will give you a decent packing result in a short packing time. The next option from the packing options sub panel is flipping enabled. By enabling this option, you will allow the packer to not only rotate the islands during the packing, but also flip them. Now by flipping, I mean scaling the island by negative one over a single axis. So let me show you when I select an island. So for instance, this one, if I go scale X minus one, you can see that I've just flipped the island. Now by enabling flipping enabled, you essentially double the number of orientations considered for every island during packaging. Thanks to the packer, it's able to generate better packing results for a UV map, but increasing the number of orientations also means that more time is needed to process the entire operation. But what is more important, you should keep in mind that checking the flipping enabled option will result in flipped islands in the result, okay? So some of the islands which were not flipped before can now be flipped after the operation was done. Flipping islands can be problematic in some rendering scenarios, like when using normal maps. That is why you should use flipping enabled option only if you are sure it won't affect your rendering workflow. The next option, which we will be discussing, will be fixed scale. Now, in order to understand what the option does, that by default, the packer always scales islands during packing in order to fit them tightly into the target UV area. Now, that's kind of like the main idea behind UV packing, isn't it? So let me do a quick demonstration. I'm gonna go out and select all the islands, scale them down by 0.9, so you can clearly see that the islands do not cover the entire default UV box. So when I press pack, the packer scaled the islands up during the operation so they could fill the entire box. Now, as a side note, just keep in mind that the packer may also scale down the islands during packaging in case the islands on input are too big to fit them onto the target box. So the default behavior is adjusting the island scale up or down for the most efficient UV area coverage. 
So what the fixed scale option does is exactly what it says in the name. The packer does not change the scale of the islands during packaging. Now you would use this option if your workflow requires you to keep the same size of particular islands fixed. Now keep that in mind, and this option does have some consequences. So I'm going to undo that operation. Let's now turn that puppy on, and uh, then I'm just gonna press pack. So now you can see that the UVs were not scaled during the operation, and it resulted in the entire tile not being filled up with islands. Now this is simply because the islands were too small to fill it up at the given fixed scale. So you should always be aware that such a situation may happen when using the fixed scale option. Now let's talk about the next parameter which is closely related to fixed scale parameter, the fixed scale strategy. The parameter determines how the packer files the target UV area when the fixed scale is enabled. Now the default value of this parameter is bottom to top. We used this strategy in the last operation and as you see the strategy implies that the packer starts filling the area from the bottom to top. Now let's do a quick demonstration of all the other ones. So uh, left to right, pack, but you know, what are the chances? And then square, let's go pack again. So as you can see that the square strategy makes the packer fill the area so that the islands from a square shape starting from the bottom left corner of the area. Okay, after fixed scale strategy is covered, there is still one more topic regarding fixed scale parameter which I need to discuss. So you already know what happens when you pack with a fixed scale enabled and the islands are too small to cover the target UV box. But one may ask, what will happen if the islands are too big? Well, let's, uh, let's, let's just do a quick test. Select all, scale, two, bam. So you can see that they cover the entire square. Um, and then I might just move it over to the side just so we can see what's happening. And then I'm just gonna press pack. So yeah, only some of the islands were packed into the box. All the other islands, which couldn't fit, were left in its place. So it is something you need to always keep in mind that may happen when the fixed scale mode is enabled. Hopefully, as you can see, the packer always shows a warning. In this case, where not all islands were fit onto the target box. So you don't need to worry that you'll miss such a situation. Okay, the last option from the packing option sub panel is normalize islands. Now when you enable this option, the packer will automatically normalize islands before packing. Now normalizing, I mean averaging the island scale so that the textile density of every island is the same. Such normalization is essentially equivalent to running the blender building operation average island scale. So let's run this operation. Now notice how these three islands were scaled down by the average operator. And that's because their textile density was much bigger than the density of all the other islands. Okay, let's, uh, let's just undo that. And I'm gonna enable the normalized islands and then just press back. Now pay attention to um, this one, this one, and this one, and how the packer is, did essentially the same as before, but it scaled those three islands down. And now when I select everything and we run average island scale, you see that like nothing happens. Now, no islands were scaled up nor down and that's expected. Now the packer has already normalized the islands before packing them. And so the next normalization operation on the islands have already been normalized. So there's nothing to do. Okay, so now we're done with the packing options sub panel. So let's proceed to look at the next sub panel, which is the pixel margin. Now to enable the pixel margin functionality, you just need to put a click next to the pixel margin box. Easy. So now I mentioned the panel in the previous part of the tutorial, but let's recall that info once again. Now the pixel margin functionality allows you to define the exact distance between islands in the pixels of the texture. The distance you define here is exact, contrary to the distance defined by the basic margin parameter from the packing options panel, which we discussed in the previous part. Now, keep in mind that after you enable the pixel margin panel, the basic margin value is not used anymore during packing. And that's why the parameter is now grayed out in the UI. Now, the most fundamental parameter of the pixel margin functionality is the pixel margin. Now, it defines the exact distance between islands in pixels of the texture during packing. Now, it's set to five pixels, so let's just press the pack button. 
Now, as you can see, that five pixels is quite a small value, so the islands were packed quite tightly. Now, let's set the pixel margin to 10, and I'm gonna click Repack or Pack. So the option is fairly self-explanatory, but let me underline that again. The main advantage of this option is the fact that you get the exact island spacing in pixels of the texture. It's something which is really crucial to a lot of workflows. But in the pixel margin panel, you can configure other interesting things as well, not only spacing in between islands. So let's proceed to the next option, pixel padding. Using this option can define the distance between UV islands and the target box borders independent from the pixel margin parameter, okay? So by default, the value of this is set to zero, which means its functionality is disabled. So let's set the pixel padding to like a larger number, like I don't know, 50, and we'll click pack. And yep, as you can see, the distance between the islands is set to 10 pixels, but the distance between the islands and the tile border is much larger. So that was strictly for presentational purposes. A more useful thing about the pixel padding parameter is the fact that you can set it to a very small number. So let's set it to like, whoops, one. And remember that zero means it's disabled. And let's just go pack. And let's kind of zoom into the tile border. So I'm gonna come down to the bottom. Now you can clearly see why the pixel padding is so useful. Now, while the distance between islands has not changed, the distance between islands and border is now minimized so that this extra texture space is now used, resulting in better UV coverage. So the next option is the extra margin to others. But let's, let's just skip it for a sec. You'll see why in a moment. Let's now proceed to the next option, which is texture size. Now, this is quite self-explanatory. So you define the size of the texture of the UV map being packed will be used with, okay? All pixel-based values in the pixel margin panel are defined in relation to the size defined in this parameter, okay? So let's now kind of go back and have a look at the extra margin to others parameter. To understand this option, you first need to know what others mean in this context. In order to explain this, I will now talk about the difference between these two buttons pack and pack to others. To demonstrate this ability, I will select a subset of the islands from my UV map, and I'm gonna press Control L to select everything that's linked, and then kind of let's just move it off to the side. Now the pack button performs the most straightforward packing operation. It'll pack all the currently selected islands while totally ignoring all unselected islands during the operation. So when I press pack, you can see that the selected islands were packed over the unselected. And that's because the unselected islands were ignored by the operation, okay? So let's control Z. I'm gonna do that again. Now, what pack to others does is packing all currently selected islands to others, well, as the name suggests, where others means all the unselected islands. So what the operation does is adding all the selected islands to the unselected islands. So let's take a look what happens when I press pack to others. So as you can see, this time the unselected islands were not ignored and they were you know, processed as others. So now with this knowledge in mind, let's get back to the extra margin to others parameter from the pixel margin panel. So this parameter is used in the pack to others operation. You can use it to add extra distances between selected islands being packed and unselected islands. This is the extra distance, meaning that the value of this parameter is added to the pixel margin value. So let's demonstrate how this works. I'm going to set it to uh, 30. And with such a configuration, when pack to others operation is run, the distance between the selected islands will be determined by the pixel margin parameter. So in this case, it'll be 10 pixels, but the distance between the selected islands and the unselected islands will be your pixel margin value plus the extra margin value. So it is 10 plus 30, which is 40 pixels. All right, so let's go pack to others and see what happens. See, yep. As you can see, the distance between the selected and unselected islands are now much larger than the standard distance between the selected islands being packed. So that's all I wanted to show you. For the record, in the tutorial, we discussed the basic packing operations. That is the operations in the packing panel and the pixel margin panels. 
and uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you if you've gotten this far, just just do it.